time travel is a popular topic, and the idea that we might be able to visit the past or the future keeps fascinating scientists just as much as the public. In 1932, newspaper reporter J. Bernard Hutton and photographer Joachim Brandt were assigned to do a feature story on the Hamburg, Germany shipyard. They drove to the huge complex, interviewed several executive and workers and completed the assignment by late afternoon. As they were leaving, the two newsmen heard the unmistakable drone of aircraft engines and looked up to see the sky filled with warplanes. They then heard the city's anti-aircraft batteries opening fire as bombs began exploding around them. Moments later, the area was a raging inferno as fuel tanks were hit. Warehouses were collapsing from high explosives and dock cranes were twisted. They snapped pictures of the devastation and the two drove back into Hamburg, but when the film was developed, there was no evidence of the attack. The pair's editor accused the men of being drunk and discounted their story. Afterward, Hutton moved to London where he supposedly saw a newspaper story in 1943 about a Royal Air Force raid on Hamburg. The accompanying photo showed the shipyard just as he and Brandt saw it 11 years earlier. Father Pellegrino Onetti was a Benedictine monk who claimed to have co-invented the Chronovisor, a device that looked like a television but could tune into events from the past. According to Onetti, he observed the Last Supper and Christ's crucifixion. The team had later voluntarily dismantled the device, because in the wrong hands it could create the most fearsome dictatorship the world has ever seen. It had been inspired, he said, by Nostradamus, who had personally related to him the device's possibilities. When pressed for evidence, Onetti produced a picture of Christ on the cross reportedly photographed through the chronovisor. After the photo's resemblance to a carving was noticed, however, Onetti was forced to admit the photo was a fake. Nevertheless, he insisted the chronovisor was real. In the fall of 1943, the USS Eldridge was allegedly made invisible and teleported from Pennsylvania to Virginia in an incident that came to be known as the Philadelphia Experiment. Of course, many believe the incident never occurred, but that didn't stop Alfred Bilek from achieving notoriety as Eldridge's reputed lone survivor. His memories were buried until he saw the movie The Philadelphia Experiment in 1988 at which time he remembered that he was born in 1916 as Ed Cameron. As Cameron, he'd been recruited in 1940 for an alleged Navy project called Project Rainbow, whose purpose was to figure out how to make ships invisible. For reasons not entirely clear, Black Ops soldiers later sent Cameron through a portal and physically regressed him into a one-year-old Alfred Bilek in 1927. On August the 30th, 2006, 36-year-old Hakan Nordfis came to find water pooling on his kitchen floor. Assuming it was a leak, he gathered his tools and crawled under the sink, but wasn't able to reach the pipes. He stated that he had to crawl inside the cabinet, and as he did so, he noticed a light. He crawled towards the light and then he realized he was in the future. The year was 2042, which is where he met his 72-year-old self. To his surprise, future himself knew things that only he could have known, like where he'd hidden specific objects. The two selves even had the same tattoo, though the 72-year-old was a little faded. The photo shown was the only one he apparently took. In 1935, a wing commander with Britain's Royal Air Force named Sir Victor Goodard flew his open cockpit biplane from Scotland to England on weekend leave. On the way, he passed over Drem Airfield near Edinburgh, which had been constructed during World War I. The tarmac and four hangars were in despair and barbed wire divided the field into numerous pastures filled with grazing cattle. Returning home a day later, Goodard ran into a violent storm and lost control of his plane. When he finally recovered from a downward spiral, he was just several feet above a stony beach. As Goodard climbed back up through the rain and fog, the sky suddenly filled with sunlight. Below him was Drem Airfield, only the farm had disappeared, and the hangars were no longer in despair. At the end of the restored tarmac stood four bright yellow planes, one an unfamiliar monoplane, these were surrounded by mechanics in blue overalls, notable to Goodard since RAF mechanics only ever wore brown. Could Goodard, who was a senior commander in the Royal Air Force, been confused about his location, or had he travelled forward in time? 